Welcome to Slayer the Alchemist, where we discuss all things heavy metal and hard rock. On today's episode, let's rank the David Byron era Uriah Heap albums. I've been on a Uriah Heap kick lately, been watching this Lee Kerslake documentary called Not on the Heap. Uh, I've always loved Lee's playing. He reminds me of John Bonham. He played on the first two Ozzy albums. So it got me going back, listening to this classic 70s Byron era Heap Records, Uriah Heap, they're kind of a band that falls a bit in the shadow of Black Sabbath and Deep Purple, especially Deep Purple, because Uriah Heap has the keyboards in them. But for me, what I always made uh, Uriah Heap's kind of signature calling card was the background vocals, which are amazing. They're amazing on the record and they're amazing live, something that a band like Queen, in my opinion, their background vocals, never they never really pulled them off uh, live, but Heap sounds amazing and nine albums with david byron before he sadly passed away in 1985 uh they're uneven there's some really good stuff there's some albums that have good stuff on it and that's the others that uh, it just kind of falls off so they're a bit inconsistent with me through their catalog but uh, i thought it would be fun to rank their albums because there is a lot of good stuff there i love gary thane's bass playing john wetton who replaced gary after he passed Ken Hensley, I mentioned already, he's a great songwriter, and the sound of his uh, Hammond organ and Mick Box's guitar is kind of the sound of your and the background vocals is the sound of Uriah Heap for me. The way the the uh, that Hammond organ and the guitar sort of blend together, almost like one big sound, I think is is awesome. Uh, who did I miss? Did I miss? I mentioned Lee Kerslake already. Uh, okay, so uh, let's get into it. Nine albums. Coming in at number nine for me from 1976 is High and Mighty. Uh, it's the last album with David Byron and John Wenton on bass. I love the production on this record. It has a nice warm production to it produced by the band, but it lacks the heaviness and progressive flourishes that I really need from Uriah Heep. One way or another, the opening track is really catchy. Wetton and Hensley on the lead vocals on that one. Weep in Silence is a beautiful, moody ballad. David sounds amazing on that. Uh, Midnight, classic, majestic-sounding Uriah Heep. Side 2 kind of loses it for me here. Can't keep a good band down. Do not like that. It's like a str- you're trying to do this sort of straight-ahead rock like Boston, for instance, but it's nowhere near as catchy or as well put together as Boston. It's like uninteresting Boston for me. Woman of the World, no, don't like that. Footprints in the Snow, decent ballad. Can't Stop Singing, oh, don't like this at all. Failed pop song for me, that bizarre chanting in the beginning, I I don't get that. Confessions, beautiful piano ballad, sad lyrics, especially when you think of uh, David Byron's situation. I probably like this better than some people, but still when I'm talking this era of the band, it comes in at number nine for me. Number eight, uh, Wonder World, 1974, last album with Gary Thane. Uh, most of these albums are produced by, the rest of these albums are produced by Gary Braun, who uh, ran Braun's, the Braun's record label, which, which they were on. The sound for me on this one, and I'm talking about the original vinyl here, it, 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 it's very kind of muffled and lacking in the highs for me. You could call it warm if you wanted to say what you liked about it, but overall, it's it's a little kind of dull and flat sounding to me. I don't know if that's been corrected in the remasters. I can't really say. The title track is fantastic, though. I love the way it builds, and the uplifting chorus of it is just great. Shadows in the Wind is a cool one that builds nicely. So Tired is a fast rocker, but I don't really like the melody in this one, and the chorus is a little too kind of sing-songy. The Easy Road is a short, nice ballad. Something or Nothing, good chorus. I don't mind, pretty heavy, bit too long for me. The tempo of it makes it kind of feel like it's dragging a little bit. We Got We, cool vocal harmonies. Dreams, I I love this. Epic album closer. Loses a bit of the punch, though, due to the production. But a great album closer. Closer. But it comes in at number uh eight for me all right number seven from 1975 return to fantasy really like side one of this record uh it's the first one with john wetton on bass after the passing of gary thane very strong side one the title track is awesome totally love it this is what i want to hear from you right he progressive soaring vocals uplifting kind of fantasy feel to it top 10 uriah heap song for me shady lady devil's daughter 
good upbeat numbers, beautiful dream, proggy and trippy. I love the synth sounds in that one. Side two kind of loses it for me and it drags this album down. Prima Donna and Your Turn to Remember, I don't like those. They've got this old time kind of rock and roll feel, which Rye Heap does that kind of a lot, but it just doesn't work. Sometimes it works, doesn't work here at all for me. Don't like those songs. Showdown, okay, rocker. Why did you go? I guess is a nice ballad. A year or a day is a cool heavy closer. I like the kind of fantasy feeling uh, to the lyrics there, but it's basically side two drags this down for me, which causes it to land at number seven. Number six. Salisbury, and I am going with the U.S. version on this one. High Priestess, good album opener, Time to Live, nice wah-wah playing from Mick Box, kind of a signature of his playing, nice and heavy. Lady in Black, memorable acoustic bass number, real catchy, got a nice feel to it. I like Simon the Bullet Freak, that's a cool opener to side two. The title track, it's this orchestral kind of number it reminds me of like pink floyd experimenting with the orchestral stuff and it is really cool and i do like it but it's so like off from what uriah heap did before or after it just it stands out it just doesn't fit the uriah heap sound but i do it i do like it it is cool and i do like when bands incorporate orchestral things and maybe if they had continued to go in that direction it would have been kind of cool in some ways i kind of wish that they would have but here it just kind of stands out as this thing like they just did it and then never came really anywhere near it again uh number five for me sweet freedom from 1973 dreamer uh the opening track never liked the feel or chorus in this one i've always liked this album the way it folds out into sort of this dry album thing cool pictures of the band inside but I never really liked Dreamer I never liked the feel of it I never liked the chorus in it Stealing uh, was a hit, kind of a radio hit for the band and I do like that one but it's not um, it's cool and I like the way it builds and the, and the uh, vocals and everything to it uh, but it's not like a top 10 Uriah Heap song for me. Uh, One Day is awesome, grandiose feel and background vocals. Love it. Love the verse melody and the chord progression. Sweet Freedom, the title track, uh, beautiful verse melody from Byron. Just a great song. I love that. If I Had the Time, cool number that takes you on a on a ride, kind of mellow and trippy. Seven Stars and Circus are decent. I love Pilgrim. It's an awesome, epic Closer to the record, nice changes, great guitar solo, fantastic, fantastic uh, closer to the album. I don't have this one in a plastic cover because I got to get a better copy of it. It's a little bit noisy for me. Key number four, self-titled uh, or very heavy, very humble. I'm going with the U.S. version here because it drops Lucy Blues and puts in place of it. Lucy Blues, which I think is completely boring sort of ruins the very heavy, very humble version of this record. But putting Bird of Prey in here is just awesome. Love that tune. Great, great proto-metal number. That main riff in that is absolutely killer. I don't like Come Away Melinda. I know that's a cover, but I just don't really like it. Uh, Gypsy, super cool, early proto-metal. You know, uh, Martin Popoff often says, and I agree with them, 1970 deep purple and rock the first black sabbath record and this one are sort of like ground zero the birthplace for metal i'll keep on trying awesome and dark more early metal uh wake up set your sights it's got this late 60s garage psych feel it feel to it which i do think is pretty cool uh walking in your shadow dream mare and really turned on are cool heavy rockers so this one comes in at number four for me number three from 1971 look at yourself mine doesn't have the cool foil thing i actually have one that has the cool foil on it but the uh it's really beat up and so i found this one great condition uh last album with paul newton on bass heavy in your face vibe to the production it reminds me a little bit of in rock in that sense it's just it's really like in your face with the production great this is when i'm talking about that organ Hammond organ and guitar kind of blending into one big heavy sound. I'm thinking of this album uh, especially. Title track is just awesome, super catchy, hard driving guitar, organ riffs. Tears in my eyes, 
not my favorite one on this record, but still pretty cool. I want to be free July morning. Great soaring and dramatic. The vocals in, in these, those are awesome. Shadows of grief. Love it. Progressive and dark at times. Love the middle section with there's like these harmony vocals way in the background that just keep on building until, you know, they just like get up really high into range. Awesome. Love machine. Cool, heavy number. Nice guitar work. All right. So this one comes in at number three for me. Number two, Magician's Birthday from 1972. I actually had this one. I had Look at Yourself in the number two spot, but ah, man, I just love this record. The Roger Dean cover, we get this with this, and uh, what you can guess is my number one uh, number one album. Uh, so love the cover on this. Sunrise, oh man, just amazing, epic, incredible background vocals. Spider Woman, never really liked that one. Too rock and roll for me, It kind of sing-songy. But it's the only one that I don't like on this record. Blind Eye, love the hard kind of folk feel to it. Echoes in the Dark is just great. The atmosphere, uh, Thane's bass playing is fantastic. Rain, uh, beautiful vocals. Sweet Lorraine, really catchy, sticks in your ear. Tales, incredible. Love the sort of Z Led Zeppelin-like feel to it. And The Magician's Birthday, just prog rock number that just takes out the album with all the changes. It's super cool, Get, like guitar solo in it, awesome drumming in it, fantastic, love it. All right, but number one, as you can guess, the other Roger Dean album cover, Demons and Wizards. Wow, what can you say about this? I remember I told this story about an uncle giving me a box of eight tracks and this was in there and I just love this. Uh, the cover is great, 1972, everything clicks on this. Perfect balance of heaviness and progginess. Great production, great playing, great vocals, just great everything about it. The Wizard, maybe their signature song. Love the lyrics, super catchy, the acoustic 12-string guitar in it and everything, fantastic. Traveler in Time and Easy Living, amazing heavy rockers that are just so catchy, great. I love Gary Thane's bass playing on those. Poets Justice, Circle of Hands, fantastic. Rainbow Demon, so moody, so heavy. The organ sound in this is just crushing. I, I love it. Is it an early doom metal song? Yeah, maybe. And here it's mostly driven by that heavy, heavy Hammond organ. All my, all my life, love that twisty kind of spidery guitar riff at the beginning of that. Paradise, trippy, psychedelic number, nice acoustic guitars. The spell, great album closer that goes through so many different changes of tempo, feel, and mood, but it all works and flows together. Love the way this song builds and builds towards the end. So this is just an amazing record. I wish they could have kept the the vibe that they had going on here with Between Magician's Birthday and Demons and Wizards. I wish they could have kept that more it just seemed like after magician's birthday they they started changing their sound a little and searching and it was never quite the same i mean i would give magician's birthday and demons and wizards those are 10 out of 10 albums for me did a video on those i'll link that both those records i'll link that down below all right there you go my ranking of the nine david byron era uriah heap albums let me know what you think of mine let me know how you would rank them i'm curious how you guys rank some of the some of the later ones. I mean, I think most people would agree that Demons and Wizards and Magician's Birthday and Look at Yourself, those are the like the 10 out of 10 records. But after that, it gets a little, people's opinions differ on it really after that. So I'm curious what your opinion is. Let me know down below. Till we see you again, make sure you rock hard, ride free. And stay heavy, stay humble.